Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on your Friday. I'm Sophie Erber. A Sioux City man is being charged with murder tonight after a fatal stabbing left one person dead and another seriously injured. And it's our top story at five. Officers found the suspect, Michael Landrum, age 54, in the 2100 block of Nebraska Street around 2.23 in the morning. He was taken into custody. At around 12.55 Friday morning, Sioux City Police were called to a home at 2103 Nebraska Street. When officers arrived, they found two victims suffering from multiple stab wounds. Both victims were taken to Mercy One Hospital. One victim, a 37-year-old man, died from his injuries. The other victim, a 43-year-old female, is currently being treated for what they called serious injuries. Sioux City Police Chief Rex Mueller says he is proud of the department's response. As always, I'm thrilled and appreciative of the incredible response of our patrol officers, our detectives, our crime scene technicians, and our 911 dispatchers. The longer a crime of this type goes, the more difficult it becomes uh, to rectify it. In this case, uh, everybody's work came together and they were able to uh, bring this uh, to a successful conclusion. Landrum was arrested and is currently being charged with first degree murder and willful injury. He was booked into the Woodbury County Jail. Police are continuing to investigate this incident. Thousands lost their lives on this day back in 2001. And today, some Siouxland first responders paid tribute to that. KCAU 9 News reporter Marina Bach joins us live now from Olsen Stadium, where they climbed today in honor of those who gave their lives to save others. Marina? Sophie, the climb took place here at Olsen Stadium on Morningside College's campus. The men participating in the climb took 500 of these stairs. Can you even imagine so much endurance? But the workout represents the police, firefighters, EMT workers that risked their lives trying to save others on 9-11. Here we go, here we go. Go! Five Sioux City first responders on a mission to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Those guys ran in that day knowing that uh, they might have to risk their life. Um, and 343 did that. 500 stairs. Symbolizing the emergency workers that responded to the World Trade Center on 9-11. This job is dangerous and it could kill you, but that's what courage is, ignoring that fact and doing what needs done anyway to put others before yourself. And on 9-11-01, that's, that's what those people did. They did what our job and our service is all about. Devin Shipper and George Glass organized the climb this year, as well as back in 2019. They tackled the climb wearing 60 pounds of gear. Full gear, full SCBA on air, like the real thing. So, because when we're at work, we never know when it's going to happen. So we always got to be ready for it. This year, the pair was able to recruit a few more participants from their department, as well as their brothers in blue. Um, you know, these guys are, they, they feel the same way I do. They're passionate about the job. They train hard. Um, you know, and they try to they try to serve the citizens of the city um, to the best of their ability, and, and we're demonstrating that today. The climb challenges the men both physically and mentally, helping prepare them for what's to come when they strap on their uniforms. Let our community know that we're ready to do the same if ever need be, but I hope I can be half as courageous as those people that day. So. Road team on mission. Glass says COVID-19 was a concern planning this event, so he made it more small and intimate, less people. But next year, he's going to go bigger and better, inviting more people out to participate. He's wanting to get police, firefighters, EMT members, as well as community members to get out and be a part of this climb for 9-11. In Sioux City, Marina Bach, KCAU 9 News. All right, thanks so much, Marina. Well, on Saturday, the Siouxland Miracle Riders were turned back to Sioux City from an eight-day, 3,500-mile ride. The group of eight men traveling through Montana, Utah, Colorado, Kansas, and Nebraska. Their mission? To raise awareness and funds for the Unity Point St. Luke's Miracle Network. Today, a check for $37,656, to be exact, presented to the hospital. The funds are used for equipment and care for Siouxland families. A lot more than I think we, we thought would happen this year. We knew it was going to be a tough year. It was short notice. So, we were again, we were just trying to raise some money for the kids because we knew that they needed it this year, no matter what's going on in the world. Thompson says he plans to continue the annual ride next year. 
And it's time tonight for our first check on the weather. Meteorologist Marcus Beasley standing by. Marcus, you could see those firefighters during that climb contending with some slippery bleachers. Uh, it was rainy across most of Siouxland today. Yeah, it's been a rainy one outside with cool temperatures once again today here throughout the region. And we are going to see a warming trend after today. It actually looks to be the last of the chilly days with the rain here throughout Siouxland, at least for the most part. Tomorrow we might see some showers. I'll get to that here in a minute. Highs today in the upper 50s out there, getting up to 57. Seven in Sioux City, Lamar's in Cherokee, 56 for your high in Wayne, 55 in Yankton, Orange City, as well as Storm Lake, and 57 in Denison and Carroll. Tonight, temperatures will drop into the upper 40s and lower 50s. It does look like we will continue to see those clouds, maybe a few showers tonight. Tomorrow morning, looking a bit rainy before we really see things dry out for the second half of the weekend. I'll have more of those details in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie? All right, thanks so much, Marcus. And now a quick check on Siouxland's latest COVID-19 numbers to end the week. Woodbury County Health officials confirming 19 new cases today, listing 23 patients currently hospitalized due to the virus. In Nebraska, Dakota County reports eight new positive tests today. The county has recorded 95 confirmed cases of COVID-19 over the past two weeks. And in South Dakota, Clay County reports 93 active cases. Lincoln County reports 153 active cases. Both of those counties have what they call substantial community spread of the virus. The Sioux City Community School District releasing its weekly report today of COVID-19. This week, the district says four students report testing positive for COVID-19. In addition to four staff members testing positive. School officials tonight say contact tracing in each of these cases has been done in conjunction with the Siouxland District Health Department. A Siouxland teacher on a mission tonight to give her students access to clean drinking water at school during the pandemic. After COVID-19 measures shut down drinking fountains throughout the districts, many students left to have to bring disposable water bottles with them to class. That's when Linda Monk decided to bring in her own reusable water bottles for these students. What I've been doing is every time I see a kid with like a plastic throwaway one, I'm like, hey, bud, let me trade you. I'll give you this one. It's yours to keep. Put your name on it and give me that one, and I'm going to recycle it. Don't use those kind anymore. So that's been so fun to see their faces like, I get to keep this? You don't have to pay for it? Nope. It's totally yours. And coming up tonight at 6, KCU 9 News reporter Lydia Vasquez shares how the community is now rallying behind this teacher to help her cause. Sioux City fire crews were called to rescue a man stuck in a boom truck. It happened around 1130 this morning. Officials say a tree service operating a boom truck hit a live wire, causing the truck to shut down, leaving its passengers stranded in the trees. The incident happening on the 2800 block of South Cornell Street. Officials say MidAmerican Energy briefly shut the power down during these recovery efforts. No one was injured. Americans across the country, of course, remember the government shutdown last year, and members of Congress do not want a repeat of those events tonight. KCU 9 Washington correspondent Basil John reports on why Congress and the administration are working well in advance. The clock is ticking for Congress to prevent another government shutdown at the end of September. There is, under no circumstance, any uh, room for us to face a potential government shutdown again. Virginia Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger says the proactive discussion between the House and the Trump administration is reassuring. I'm certainly having those conversations uh, before we are at the brink of a shutdown is incredibly important. Both House Democrats and Republicans say last year's shutdown should never be repeated. Pennsylvania Congressman Mike Kelly. I would be shocked if uh, if we reach September 30th and there's no agreement that's reached. I don't think it's to anybody's advantage to let that happen. Both Spanberger and Kelly say a shutdown on top of the current pandemic would be too much for many Americans to handle. To keep the roof over their head, to keep food on their table, and to be able to fund them in a way that they can still afford to raise their families without having to worry about losing their home. Few things are worse than, than doubling uh, the, the negative impact across our communities by, by risking a government shutdown. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and U.S. Secretary Steve Mnuchin are still in talks on a continuing resolution that avoids conflict. In Washington, Basil John, KCAU 9 News. To remember 9-11, an Army veteran tonight using his art skills in a way he calls a beacon of hope for the community. A closer look at his work coming up. And it's been damp all day, and that looks to continue this evening. A few showers possible tomorrow early, and then sunshine with highs in the 80s for most of next week. Details on all of that after the break.
You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Thanks for sticking with us on this rainy Friday uh, as advertised. But, you mm -hmm. know, it's good. We're, you know, dipping into that drought yeah, um, monitor that we have just a little bit. But mm -hmm. I hear that, uh, and of course, you'll get to this in your forecast, we might be undoing everything that we yeah. got rain-wise with warmer temperatures coming up <laughs> starting this weekend. That's right. It is looking like a warming trend will continue this weekend. A little bit of a break in the warming trend today. Very similar weather temperature-wise today compared to yesterday. But if you go back a few days to Tuesday and Wednesday, we are warmer now compared to then. So a little bit of a warming trend break here now but that warming trend will pick back up tomorrow and we'll continue to see warmer temperatures this weekend and into next week the view from the ho-chunk center is a gray one we're seeing those gray skies out there cloudy conditions with light rain showers throughout most of sioux land and we are going to continue to see that rain fall into the afternoon later afternoon and evening hours i should say as far as rainfall today we've seen a little over a tenth of an inch right there at 0.15 here in sioux city lamar's very similar rainfall totals also Yankton slightly over a tenth. Wayne right there around a tenth of an inch. No rain recorded in Cherokee and Storm Lake as you head down to the south and east. Carroll at a tenth of an inch. So most of us seeing just a very little bit of rain, uh, a little bit of rain right there to trace to a tenth of an inch for most of us. Saturday afternoon, we can still see some lingering showers. I think for the most part, though, things will begin to dry out by Saturday afternoon. And then by 8 o'clock Saturday night, we'll begin to see our skies clearing out. And then as we head into Sunday morning, we're going to have clear skies with quiet conditions. Sunday is going to be a sunny day here throughout Siouxland, believe it or not. We haven't seen too many of those here this week. And it does look like we are going to see temperatures warming back up into the upper 70s and lower 80s possible by Sunday. As far as the additional rainfall forecast goes, we're not expected to see too much rain, maybe around tenth of an inch to two tenths of an inch for most of Siouxland as we head into tonight and tomorrow morning. It does look like Yankton and up towards Sioux Falls. You can see a little bit more there, but I think most of us somewhere will fall into the tenth to two tenths of an inch of additional rain. Tonight, 51 degrees for your low temperature with some lingering showers. Tomorrow, a high of 67, so it will be more comfortable tomorrow. We'll have rain in the morning with clearing in the afternoon. Your 909 forecast showing that we are going to see a high of 81 on Sunday, so warming up nicely by the tail end of the weekend, 83 degrees on Monday, 85 Tuesday, and then the rest of next week looking like we'll continue to stay there in the lower to mid 80s. So a very warm summer-like week ahead of us, a complete opposite than turnaround from what we've seen here this week. On the bright side, this might mean that uh, those fall colors will actually uh, hang on if yeah. we have a little bit of warmer weather now. Hopefully, we'll see. All right, thanks a lot. Well, staff with the Sioux City Parks and Rec's Department are moving out of their old offices today. The Long Lines Family Rec Center has served as the offices for the Parks Department for many years, but as of today, our new home is inside the brand new Siouxland Expo Center. If you'd like, you could read the full story. It's on our website right now. That's SiouxlandProud.com. A small charity is doing some big good in North Carolina tonight, con collecting and donating sporting goods as well as socks for hospital workers. The sibling success story coming up, plus an Army veteran painting to remember the victims of 9-11, as well as service members who've taken their own lives. More on the message behind the art next. An Army veteran using his art skills tonight to remember 9-11 in a way he calls a beacon of hope. Hunter Release shares his story. Part of my focus and my motivation for this is the 22 veterans a day that commit suicide. I was on the edge myself. Michael Casey is an artist and Army veteran who wants to give others hope after a turning point hit his life. I discovered uh, All Secure, which is a book by Sergeant Major Satterley uh, from Delta Force. He was in Black Hawk Down and I sent him a message and he responded and he kept giving me feedback and it was just fire for me. At least what I needed. Casey is now building two twin towers to be displayed at the hub in Monroe on 9-11 as a remembrance of the 19th anniversary. And the inspiration behind his art? Well, that was in a lot of ways, you know, it's kind of writhing from what was happening in all of our cities. They're, they're burning down, people are dying on all sides, left and right. And, and that's why, you know, I paint these birds and I always think of a bird has a left wing and a right wing. And when the wings don't cooperate, the bird dies, and that's us, that's all of us. These 26-foot tall towers are being built for what Casey says is a beacon of hope in our country today. Why remember? Is it to feel bad or to feel sad? And I think it's a hopeful situation because in those towers was everyone, every race, every gender, every religion, 
We were all in that, and it bound us together. And for a minute, we were united. And 19 years later, our country's burning, and it's like it never happened. Nothing is the same now. And it's just like in 9-11 in 2001, nothing was the same on September 12th as it was on September 10th. Everything had changed. Well said. Well, after just a few years, a group of North Carolina siblings has reached a milestone tonight. Their charity surpassing a million dollars in donations. How they've collected and distributed all of it next. A family with a passion for helping others. Just a few years after a group of North Carolina siblings created their own charity, they have since collected and distributed a million dollars in donations. Maggie Newland has their story. Andrew Jocelyn and Jackson Young spend much of their free time in their family garage, cleaning and sorting donated sports gear. We have done donations to 30 plus states and many more countries. They got the idea from their grandmother who grew up in an orphanage in Poland. One time she was going through my closet and I had a lot of used sports clothing and she thought it'd be a great idea to give it back to people. So they created DonateSport.org to collect athletic clothing and equipment for kids in need. Three to four years ago we started giving it away and at the beginning we only had a project maybe a month or two and before COVID, we started having projects every week. Then the pandemic stopped everything from sports to travel. But the young still wanted to help, so they turned their efforts to local hospitals. Well, they brought us a bountiful supply of socks and a lot of uh, uh, orthotic insoles for our shoes. Ryan Conklin is the executive chef at UNC Rex. Our team, as well as the team with environmental services, they're really on their feet all day long, some of them up to 12-hour shifts. The young say they deliver tens of thousands of dollars worth of brand new insoles and socks to hospital workers. Uh, we've been slogging it out here since March, and then to see this kid and his father pull up, unloading boxes for our team, it was really special to see. It was really inspiring as well. It's the least we could do, giving them something small to help them out. The Youngs recently celebrated collecting and distributing a million dollars worth of donations. And they plan to keep working together to help as many people as they can. Taking a live look outside now, Marcus returns with another check on your weekend forecast coming up next. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. He's in the newsroom. Hi, Tim. Happy Friday. Hey, good afternoon, Sophie. Quick question. When's the last time you stepped up to a water fountain? Um, well, here in the newsroom today, we have that one that kind of fills up our yeah. bottles. But, yeah, I can't remember the last time I didn't use a bottle at one. Something that doesn't happen nearly as often. It's especially a problem at schools these days because of COVID-19. Coming up at 6 tonight, we'll share another example of COVID cre creativity. Find uh, out how one Siouxland teacher is working to keep kids hydrated at school, even though drinking fountains are pretty much off limits. The uh, pandemic has silenced many musicians. In fact, hundreds of shows have been canceled or postponed, some more than once. A lot of those events benefit local fire departments, sports groups, and other nonprofits. That makes the problem even worse. At 6, why some are saying it is once again time to let the music play. And since it is Friday, we'll be live out on the high school football field, Sport Zone tonight, taking a spotlight look at a game featuring two top 10 teams. We'll have that, of course, at 6. Might be a bit sloppy out there tonight. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Tim. Uh, it will be sloppy, mm -hmm. as he said, kind of yep. a soggy Friday night light because we've had rain all day and it doesn't look like it's really letting up right now. Right, we're seeing those light rain showers out there and they will continue tonight on the lighter side so it will be a muddy game. 51 degrees out there tonight. Tomorrow we'll warm back up into the 60s with some sunshine in the afternoon. Thank you, Marcus, and thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here at 6. Good night. Siouxland Proud. This is KCAU 9 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us on your Friday night. I'm Sophie Erber. And I'm Tim Seaman. A Sioux City man is behind bars tonight following the city's second homicide of the year. And an additional victim remains in the hospital after an early morning stabbing in the 2100 block of Nebraska Street. It's our top story now at 6. Officers were dispatched to a stabbing at 2103 Nebraska Street. Upon arrival, officers found a 37-year-old male and 43-year-old female who had sustained multiple stab wounds. Both were transported to Mercy Medical Center by ambulance where the male was pronounced deceased. At 
About an hour and a half later, police found that suspect on the 2400 block of Nebraska and identified him as 54-year-old Michael Landrum. He was taken into custody at that time. The investigation into the fatal stabbing continues tonight, and so the lead detective is unable to release any additional information, but police do tell us that this was not a random incident. Not random. This, uh, these people did know each other, so the suspect and the two victims do know each other. Uh, drugs and alcohol were a factor in this uh, case, yes. Detective Denny also saying that the home where that incident occurred belonged to one of the victims. We're told the female victim sustained serious injuries, but her condition is not available. Fire crews were called out to the rescue of a man stuck in a boom truck around 1130 this morning. Officials say a tree service operating a boom truck hit a live wire, causing that truck to shut down, leaving the passengers stranded in the trees. The incident happened on the 2800 block of South Cornelius Street. Officials say MidAmerican Energy briefly shut the power down during recovery efforts. Luckily, no one was injured. And all of those folks working out today in the rain, which probably added to the challenge. Sure, it didn't help. Let's check in now with meteorologist Marcus Beasley for a quick look at your weekend forecast. Marcus. Thanks, Tim and Sophie. Temperatures outside are chilly out there. We're seeing them in the mid-50s. We warmed up into the upper 50s in part of Siouxland today, so really not too warm of a day. But we are going to see warmer days ahead. 57 degrees for your high temperature recorded in Sioux City, Lamars, and Cherokee. A high of 56 today in Wayne, 55 in Yankton, Orange City, and Storm Lake. 57 for your high temperatures there in Denison and Carroll. So a cool rainy day here throughout Siouxland. Forecast lows tonight, they'll drop down a few degrees into the upper 40s and lower 50s. It looks like those clouds will stick around overnight tonight. And as we head into tomorrow, we might even see a few more showers before we really begin to see that warming trend late Saturday and throughout the day Sunday. I'll have more details on that in the 9 on 9 forecast. Tim and Sophie. All right. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Well, after COVID-19 made water fountains off limits at schools, a uh, Siouxland teacher is now on a mission to make sure students are getting the hydration that they need. That's right, Casey. U9 News reporter Lydia Vasquez shows us how she's doing it and how it's benefiting the community. Lydia? Linda Monk is a substitute teacher. When she saw South Sioux City students bringing in disposable water bottles and using disposable cups to get water from the office, she decided something needed to be done. Throw that in the recycle bin. Don't use them anymore. Take this every day. Put your name on it. What I've been doing is every time I see a kid with like a plastic throwaway one, I'm like, hey, bud, let me trade you. I'll give you this one. It's yours to keep. Put your name on it and give me that one and I'm going to recycle it. Don't use those kind anymore. Linda Monk works as a substitute teacher at schools around Siouxland. She says she started off bringing in a couple reusable bottles from home to give to students who didn't have one. You have to bring it back every day because you can't get one every day. We've got right, we all sure of our kids here at South Sioux filled. Now I can go to East Middle and North Middle. And I've been reaching out to the schools around the, the communities like, do you have a need? I think I'm going to have more. That's when she decided to reach out for donations, like to Tyson Foods, who has donated 600 reusable bottles. Just from this grassroots effort by her, contacting local businesses, um, asking if they would contribute. And again, once, once again, the Siouxland community step up and they can they help it's a fun thing it's a fun thing to do it's a fun thing to do for the community tyson along with security national bank army national guard and monks family and friends have donated to the cause i'm going to be known as the bottle lady i guess and i'm okay with that as long as it means every kid gets their own bottle to take home wash bring back Monk says providing reusable bottles not only benefits the environment but puts a smile on every student's face that's been so fun to see their faces like I get to keep this? You don't have to pay for it? Nope, it's totally yours. Monk says she initially hoped to get a few hundred donations. So far, she's received more, more than 2,000 reusable bottles to hand out to students. Live in the newsroom, Lydia Vasquez, KCAU 9 News. Great to see the community coming together. Thanks, Lydia. Well, meanwhile, the Sioux City Community School District's weekly coronavirus report shows limited exposure in the district this week. According to information released today, four students and four staff members have tested positive after attending school this past week. Sioux City schools are sharing virus-related updates each Friday. Just yesterday, the district announced that a second-grade class at Nodland Elementary is now on emergency response virtual learning after students either tested positive there or experienced symptoms of that virus.
Here's a quick check tonight on the updated COVID numbers from here in Siouxland. Woodbury County Health officials uh, list 19 new cases today, as well as 23 patients currently being hospitalized locally with virus-related symptoms. As a state, Iowa now reports nearly 73,000 total cases of the virus. In Nebraska, Dakota County reports eight new positive tests today. The county has recorded 95 confirmed cases of COVID-19 over the past two weeks. The state of Nebraska reports more than 37,000 total confirmed cases. And in South Dakota, Union County reports 40 active cases. Meanwhile, Clay County reports 93 active cases. Statewide South Dakota has recorded more than 16,000 total cases during the pandemic. On Monday, Nebraska will relax nearly all of its coronavirus reopening guidelines. The only exception being large indoor venues like concert halls where Governor Ricketts will continue to enforce restrictions. Under phase four of Nebraska's reopening plan, businesses once again will be able to welcome unlimited guests, but not all will. At the Norm Waite Jr. YMCA in South Sioux City, administrators have made the decision to remain at their own phase three level. Guests will continue to be given health screenings, including temperature checks. Several activity areas will continue to be limited to smaller groups, but workers at the Y don't see that as a problem. Nothing is going to really change for us right now, and if we were to uh, change or should modify anything that we're already doing, it would be a board decision for us. I think the most important thing is that um, not so much the capacity, because we are still we're honoring the six-foot social distancing. We have uh, everyone is required to wear a mask in all common areas in our building. Horton says deep cleaning in the building also will continue on a daily basis. As of next Monday, only Lancaster County, home of the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, will not be at phase four of reopenings. 27 counties actually went to phase four back on August 26th. And back in Sioux City, first responders paying tribute to the men and women who lost their lives today on 9-11. Four men tackled 500 stairs at Olsen Stadium in remembrance of the police, fire, and EMT members that lost their lives at the World Trade Center that day. Two Sioux City fire and rescue members wore their gear that weighs about 60 pounds. The participants say it challenges them both physically and mentally, but it helps prepare them too to be the best they can while serving our community. Every day that I come into work, um, it's not a game. Um, I love what I do. My family's only before it. Um, I just try to make sure that those people that have come before me, um, that I do a good job. I do adjust for them. Glass also says he hopes to continue this tradition next year. He wants to extend it and extend an invite to more first responders as well as community members next time. Well, Siouxland Miracle Riders returning today, uh, uh, returned uh, over the weekend, I should say, here in Sioux City after an eight-day, 3,500-mile ride in support of kids. Those riders today handing off a check for more than $37,000 to the hospital. Those funds go toward equipment and care for Siouxland families. Now, that group of eight men traveled through Montana, Utah, Colorado, Kansas and Nebraska before returning on Saturday. During that ride, the group raising awareness and financing support for Unity Point St. Luke's Miracle Network. Um, generosity of Sioux City, they kept donating while we were out, uh, came back to some more donations and checks when we returned. So just again, just very heartwarming to see what this community can do and how they step up to help uh, the kids of this uh, Siouxland. Thompson says that he uh, plays uh, plans, I should say, to continue that annual ride. The group will be back on the highway next year. Well, from office workers to doctors to wait staff, COVID-19 has changed how many jobs are done today. And for one South Dakota band, the pandemic has well closed down the performance stage. We'll check to see when they might be back in business coming up. And in weather, it's looking like we are going to have a damp evening, a few showers for tomorrow, and then sunshine with highs in the 80s next week. Details on that after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Tim Seaman, Sophie Erber, Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson, and Sports Director Jake Jones. This is KCAU 9 News at 6.